Hey guys, what's happening? So, I decided to convert this $40 Opera printer. Um, it's a Solval, um, it's called SRV01. I mean, I've already modified and created my own extruder system, but um, I wanted to convert it into a Core XY. Uh, so I'm kind of playing it right now. I printed out some mounts right now. Um, so I'm going to move some stuff around, and I'm going to try to use as much of this existing printer as I can. Like right now I'm printing out the top rack, or the top mounts right now. But uh, I wanted to basically, I want to move these 2040 rails to the sides, so one in each corner. <clears throat> so I already have, I have two, so I have four of these 2040 rails. And I have a bunch of 2020 rail left over from my uh, crypto mining rig. So a bunch of pieces over here. Alright, so I gotta disassemble this thing and uh, took my Raspberry Pi off already. It's already it, there's, right now there's already SKRP going here and it's running Clipper. Alright, so I'm gonna keep uh, the existing box down here. That's pretty cool. It's nice and tight, nice and clean, and the, the power supply, the board. Um, originally this actually had like a Creality board set up. So Solval I think makes Creality or Creality or Solval buys all Creality parts because it originally came with a Creality board and a Creality L C D. Um, so I'm going to take these off. Like I said, I, I just got to do, do some planning and I don't know if I'm going to have the the tri-bed leveling or gantry. I'm going to first just build the cube, the frame part of it. And then I'm going to figure out the best gantry. Um, you know, there's two different ways you could do a core XY. You could actually have the bed move up and down or you can actually have the Z gantry go up and down. You know, the, the head, the, uh, the, the extruder system would go up and down. Um, like with the uh, Veron 2.4, you know, with the quad quad motor control, um, or like with a rat rig, you can do like three motors that control a bed like that. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of always wanted a Core XY. I mean, I've actually worked on a lot of Core XYs, um, just haven't had one. I haven't chance to build one or buy one or whatever. I mean, I'd like to have a Veron 2.4. Like one of my other previous videos, I, I worked on that 400 by 400 uh, Veron 2.4 converted to Clipper. So this is my old trusty old school ANET printer, E10 printer from a long time ago. Um, I've had it for like probably four or five years. That was another offer up score for 40 bucks. I mean, obviously it's heavily modified, but actually what's funny is all the stuff in the garage is from offer up. That lathe, this mill, and that mill. All really incredible deals. All right, so I'll turn down to the base. And this will probably just be part one, you know, getting the uh, cube part of it done. Um, and then I'll come back and do the individual steps. Um, so that's the... I mean, obviously the max height will be this big one here because I'm going to cut the rest off here. Height-wise, I mean, it's not going to be... It's going to go like that, but height-wise... I mean, it's not going to have a high... I mean, I guess I could always get longer ones, but... I'm trying not to spend any money if I don't have to. Um, I mean, I guess I could go to the store and buy a new printer, but it's really, like, there's no fun in that, you know, just gonna... Because even if you buy, if you don't buy, like, a really expensive printer, let's say you get, like, an Ender 6, or what do they call like, Ender 5, I mean, there's still junk printers that you have to do a bunch of upgrades to. Yeah, this thing's gonna give me all linear, linear rail. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess if I need to print, I mean, the goal of this printer is high speed. So I guess if I need to print something really high, I could just use that machine over there. But my whole time in 3D printing, I've never printed anything that high. So, and that's been a while now. All right, it's so a cover off. Already removed all the wiring. That's what it is. So, kind of a bummer. I had it all this spent all this time getting it dialed in for the sew ball, but I uh, just was never going to use it because it wasn't as good as my other one. So, all right. So that's a SKR Pico. Then I have a MOSFET cooling fan. Or a driver cooling fan, and then that's a buck converter, which then powers uh, the Raspberry Pi. Ran out of light today, but I tried to make it look a little aesthetic. The in there, so got those cut, drilled. So I made sure, just in case, I, don't, I can't remember what I'm gonna do on the top here. Um, I drilled them just in case on the top M5, drilled and tapped. Um, and that's gonna go here. And then, even though this is actually screwed from the bottom, this is gonna screw. Give it extra support. 
Okay, that's the end of part one. So, um, there are the mounts right there. Got the cube finished. Um, I was kind of hoping, I wanted it sort of like the more aesthetic three-dimensional look versus just having flat things on there. Um, so I've been looking online on Thingiverse and trying to see if I could figure out a gantry situation. I mean, I looked, the Hawort looks pretty cool. Um, I might just design my own gantry, though. Just, uh, so there's a couple different ways I could design the gantry. Um, this will be the next part two video. I mean, I can put a 20-20 rail here and then have a linear rail going this way. Or I could undermount it. But I kind of like the idea of going a little bit lower, losing a little bit of, uh, you know, X travel, or I mean Z travel. Um, but that way I'd actually have the head underneath here. That way I could fish wires up in a circle to the head, kind of up an arc. And then maybe have a PTFE tube or have some, or just have my spool up here feeding directly into the the head going back and forth down here. So um, I don't, I mean, I, I do actually like them when they're lower, they're set in the, the, the tool head. Um, versus being up here on the top, you know, exposed on the top. Kind of like the protection and being able to fish wires and it makes it easier routing wires in. So I think I'm going to do some 2020 reels here. A couple other things I got to figure out too is, um, yeah, I might go four point, um, four point linear rails here for the bed. Um, and I might just do two lead screws because I'm still trying to figure out, yeah, it's cool having the, the three point bed leveling. I had to wait for that truck to go by. I live in a really busy corner. But there's a speed shop. So if you ever watch my videos and hear cars racing by, well, there's a speed shop behind my house. Um, okay, so four point bed leveling. So, I mean, I, I do have an extra 300 by 300 bed. I mean, I think that's probably the max I, I could get in here. Um, but yeah, I, what I was saying earlier is that, um, you know, like the tri, the tri bed leveling, you know, where it moves around like this. I'm still trying to figure out the point, or even like with the Verone 2.4, you know, the quad gantry. Yeah, it's cool to be able to level a gantry, but it's almost like it creates more complications. You know, if the whole goal is to have flatness, right? <laughs> well, you're also going to have a sensor that goes and detects unevenness, so it's like almost like you're adding a lot of extra complexity for no reason. At least, I mean, maybe somebody can explain it to me in the comments. Like, why? what's the benefit of that? You know, like the additional configuration and troubleshooting of the gantry you know because you have to level the gantry then you have to do a bed, bed mesh so level gantry then bed mesh so you're doing two different things and how much are you actually really gaining because you already have the bed mesh to figure out the unevenness so um, all right so yeah if you guys uh, know why, why why that's I mean so nice to have let me know in the comments but um, alright, so I guess I could do either like uh, some lead screws or ball screws. I mean, ball screws probably aren't necessary for something this light. Um, I mean, I use ball screws in all my CNC machines. But, um, you know, you don't really need a ball screw so much. One thing with ball screws, on the Z-axis it puts load on the bottom of the thread, so you don't, really have, you don't have to deal with backlash. But if you're going in this direction, horizontal, then you have to deal with backlash. I don't think there's a way to do backlash, backlash compensation in Clipper. I know you can with CNC machines. But, um, all right, so that's the project, you know. This is part one. So the goal is to have a really high-speed printer. And I might mill out for the for the X gantry. I might actually take that, put it on one of the, the CNC router and cut out a bunch of slots to make it lighter. Improve speed, just some ideas, you know. So, all right, cool, having fun.